Have you ever stopped to look at a flower? What does a flower look like in your point of view? Do you notice the soft, colorful petals? Do you look inside a flower? In other words, have you seen the flower in Georgia O'Keeffe's eyes? If you haven't, I can show you Georgia O'Keeffe's flowers. Hello everyone. The artist I chose to focus on is Georgia O'Keeffe. She was best known for her close-up paintings of flowers and appreciation for nature. The artwork I'm focusing on is gray, lilac, lavender, and yellow. The medium is an oil painting on canvas. The size of the painting is 48 by 30 inches. This painting was created in 1923 and can be viewed in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Her other well-known artworks are The Black Iris in 1926 and Cow Skull, Red, White, and Blue in 1931. Now I'm, going to now I'm going to describe this painting with the formal elements and principles of design. This artwork contains a gray background opening up to reveal large, colorful flower. This may seem plain at first glance, but it has more beauty to it than it seems. Most of the lines in this painting are curved. The line in the middle divides and slightly opens the flower, so the viewer can briefly see the inside of the flower. The curvy lines move down except for the line at the top of the painting. This line spreads out to reveal another background. The line quality of this painting has thin strokes to carefully construct the flower and the background. With the painting's background, the viewer can see the achromatic value scale being used to make the most of the gray background change from white to gray. At the top of the painting, the viewer can see white light against the blue background. The small background is trying to imitate white light against the bright blue sky. Despite the title stating it has lavender and yellow, there is a variety of colors in this painting. The viewer can obviously see lavender and yellow in the flower, but there are also colors of blue and pink. Near the opening of the flower, it seems like white was mixed with lavender and yellow to create a tint of those colors. At the corners at the top, there are hints of pink, softening the ends of the gray background. Overall, the intensity of lavender, yellow, pink, and blue are low because of the faded appearance of the flower and background. The cool colors of this painting give the viewer a sense of serenity and appreciation of the painting. There is just visual texture because of the flower. It appears soft in the viewer's eye. Flowers are soft and smooth when people touch the petals. The only shape in this painting is the flower. It has a long tubular shape. The flower is representational and abstract. It is representational because it is similar to an ordinary flower. It is abstract because it enlarges the size of a flower. Normally, a flower is small enough to hold. This painting has planar space. Mostly, the flower takes up the height and width of the canvas. This painting has perfect symmetrical balance. If you could split the painting in half, you would see the same exact image on the other side. This painting's focal point is the flower. When you see it, you immediately pay attention to what's in the middle, the small opening in the flower. You don't pay attention to the accents, the gray background or the blue background at the top of the painting. The gray background behind the flower is much bigger than the flower. This demands the attention of the viewer to look at the flower. Also, the flower is painted much larger. Than a normal flower. The formal elements and principles of design combine to create a stunning piece of art. This is Unity. Georgia O'Keeffe is the artist who created this painting. Michael Fallon, author of How to Analyze the Works of Georgia O'Keeffe, states that O'Keeffe had become a well known artist by the mid 1920s. The title of this painting is Gray Lime, Lavender, and Yellow. This is an oil painting. The green line is the flowers opening up to reveal a dark color, and the flower has layers of lavender, yellow, pink, and blue. The painting was created in 1923. This was after World War I. During the 1920s, it was called the Roaring Twenties because of the changing lifestyle, economic boom, and growth of new technology. Everyone wore stylish clothes, did an energetic dance called the Charleston, and watched Steamboat Willie, the first Mickey Mouse cartoon. During this glamorous time, there were two art movements, surrealism and Art Deco. The painting was created possibly in New York. In 1923, Alfred Steglitz, photographer and husband of Georgia O'Keeffe, started presenting her work in different New York galleries. They eventually married in 1924. 
This painting was created because Georgia O'Keeffe loved painting flowers, expressing art in her point of view. Fallon also pointed out that she began, Fallon also pointed out that she began painting large-scale flowers similar to seeing it through a magnifying glass in the early and mid 1920s. She used flowers for still life paintings. Still life is an arrangement of objects like fruits or flowers to make art. If you look at the top of the painting, you see the curved gray line. This line is the curve you see, similar to a woman opening her legs to reveal her vagina. The background of this is mostly gray because the gentilia matters the most. The flower, the viewer's main focus, has layers of bright colors. George O'Keefe is trying to show that a woman's private part is as delicate and gorgeous as a flower. And in her eyes, the female body is beautiful. It is something that the male body doesn't have. She wants the viewer to look at the flower and think of this unique flower in her point of view. To support this interpretation, I'm going to use feminism to explain it. Feminism is a strong belief that women should have the same rights as men. According to Fallon, people didn't take female artists as seriously as male artists in the early 20th century. However, Alfred Stiglitz saw something different in women. According to May Claxton, Alfred Stiglitz once said this quote, at last, the woman on paper. This was his reaction to seeing O'Keeffe's work. He believed that women saw things differently than men, but it doesn't make women strange. Georgia O'Keeffe supported this belief with her art. Based on Claxton's research, O'Keeffe once said this statement in her memoir. If I could paint the flower exactly as I see it, no one would see what I see, because I would paint it small, like the flower is small. So I said to myself, I'll paint what I see, what the flower is to me, but I'll paint it big, and they will be surprised into taking time to look at it. I will make even busy New Yorkers take time to see what I see of flowers. This shows that O'Keefe used feminism to prove to society that female artists matter. If male artists are honored, female artists should be honored as well. She proved that women can take the time to think, plant, and create amazing art. Her art demonstrates that women can conquer the art world. She proved that female artists can take the time to think, plan, and create art. Her art demonstrates that women can conquer the art world. They can do anything. To conclude this, I'm going to present my student artwork. For my artwork, I wanted to focus on the female body just like Georgia O'Keeffe. My artwork is called Delicate. This painting shows a feminine figure with two sunflowers instead of breasts. The background has blue on the top and purple at the bottom. I chose blue and purple because I wanted to use bright colors like O'Keeffe. I decided to use sunflowers because they grow in my high school, Sari Good STEM Academy, during the summer. The purpose of this painting was to show the beauty of the body and nature, which is similar to Georgia O'Keeffe. This painting demonstrates what I've learned from her. I've learned that I can enjoy the little things in life, be more positive, and be myself. And now... Here are the questions for the class. What is the definition of still life? What dance did people do in the Roaring Twenties? What is the title of the first Georgia O'Keeffe painting I showed you?